life in gold Cover up my heart with chrome In a constant search for a home Honestly, I don't know where to go Blind and riding like some road Street signs like Morse code Where the fuck I'ma go? Oh, oh, yeah. In the eye of New York it was I got some hoes I could call But who still hold me down If I fall Yo, you already know what it is. You're listening to The Urban Product. It's your boy, DME. It's your boy, Cozy Rich. And we got a very special guest in the studio yes, today. Sir. Returning guest, you feel me? We got Tyler Loyal yes, back sir. in the studio with us. How you doing today? I'm good, bro. We here. You good? Just good? I'm great. Coming off of yeah. release, you're telling me you're just good? Man, I'm good, bro. I'm ah, good. He said he's good. He said good. he's good. Yeah, Rich, yeah. how you doing? <clears throat> My stomach been fucked up all day today. Word. Shout out to my toilet. Nigga been held holding it down. But uh, other than that. strong. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, shit. I ain't gonna hold you. I feel much better now. Let's let's have a great show. Let's have a great talk with my nigga. Nigga, yes, Mr. Loyal. Sir. And uh, for yeah. sure, for sure. How about you, Dev? I'm good. Uh, traffic was a bitch today. I ran a little bit late, but I'm happy to be here. Um, Where was you coming from? Where was I coming from? I was coming from my crib. But um, yeah, what city you saying? Malden. Same. For real? Yeah. Same. I'm from there. Um, so I was coming from Malden, but I had to do some shit for my family real quick. So it made me run a little bit late. But I'm here right now. Happy to kick it with y'all. Amani's not here for this episode. She's a little sick. And uh, with all these variants and shit, I'm not taking any risks. So she's staying home. Uh, hopefully, she comes out good. And you'll see her next week. But right now, kicking it with the gang. Tyler's back officially in the studio for the first time. Last time we checked in with him, it was actually in an in-studio interview uh, out of Medford. He didn't have a chance to come out here. But now, he said he'd come out, and my dog is here. So, Yo, welcome back. <clears throat> Y'all actually might have seen him on Dev's, uh, his own show, when, when he had his one-on-one with Tyler. Right, when he yeah, called yeah. in, yeah, a couple they weeks ago, in, yeah. too. So, had to get him on. Had to get him on the show this week to, to talk about the album and just, you know, reconnect with our man, so. Yeah, when I called him before the tape drop, I think I called him maybe a couple days before the tape was about to was that week. come out. Yeah, facts. And he told me what to expect going into it. And, like, classic Tyler fashion, he didn't tell me what I was actually going to be getting. You feel me? He was making me wait until the day of. And I appreciate I, that. I thought I told you exactly how it is. You did, but then I went into it, and I'm like, this is, this is what you told me, but it's like, you're humble, right? Which yeah. is great. So, but to me, I think you undersell yourself sometimes. And you should because you don't want to come off too cocky. I yeah. get it. You're still new yeah. and are relatively new in the game. So you don't want to come off too braggadocious or cocky. And I get that. It depends on the day, that. though. It depends on the day. Like, Facts. There, but, be, there be days where, I, where I'll be talking my shit. Like, as you should. Nobody can fuck with me. But then there's other days where it's just on some calm shit, you know? I'm hip. I'm hip. But like, when Nova was about to drop, and when we talked to you before, when you decide was about to drop, I was nervous though, bro. You gotta, you gotta understand, like for when I didn't for Nova. Okay, like oh, I didn't okay. drop music the whole year for real. I dropped one song with my boy Mosa, and that was just like just shit to go crazy. Feed, still, you know what I'm saying, Facts. yeah. So I was just nervous. You know what's crazy about that? Because um, I had mad people hitting me up talking about like after, after viewing the interview with um, yeah. you and Dev. Mm -hmm. Mad, I know you didn't drop mad music this year, but mad people are still playing your old tracks. Like I, I know it's crazy. Like you, you already know what's getting the most plays. You know what I mean? Enemy. 
enemy the bottom still still getting crazy plays so even though you're not dropping consistent or you didn't drop consistently this year you're still doing your thing and people are remember the voice so i think you i think you on track to to have a good 2022 not for sure for sure for sure i'm not gonna lie when i first heard this track from you bro I asked this nigga in the crib on replay 20 straight times. I said, That's who the crazy. fuck is Tyler Loyal? <laughs> <laughs> and now we know. Nah, and then I po- posted it, and they were like, oh, you're mad late. And I'm like, I'm late. I'm like, who the fuck is this nigga? And then I, I looked into him, and I saw all the other connections, and I was like, oh, okay, okay, that's cool. And, and I didn't realize we were from the same city till much later. So I was like, oh, okay, so I'll actually do some look into this kid. I think hey, it's actually, I think it's really smart that you uh, dropped this track as one of you like your early ones simply because it's a really good track and since you don't drop as often people can always go back to this when they're waiting for something to just know they're gonna hear a vibe and for sure for vibe sure. out to it but um i, I want- really i really made this song just this song didn't really come from my heart for real like i just made it because i knew it had the formula to do numbers for real it's crazy Damn, that's so why i can't even listen to this is like one of the few songs that i can't listen to like, really like one of my you, you don't fuck with it anymore I never really did. Just, really? I just made it to Cause you know run you the numbers are. up. Oh shit! Yeah. You just said I, I know, know I that. can make a hit, so let's make a hit. Exactly. <laughs> nah, I no like bullshit. That. I'll pause right there because he, when I had that one-on-one like phone interview with him, I was telling, I asked him um, which song did he think was going to be a crowd favorite, and he told me after the club was going to be a crowd favorite because he already knows what his fans like yeah. like when it comes to him. And it's crazy. He and he was that. right. <laughs> it's crazy. He <laughs> said that because I was. <laughs> That was my favorite track. Yeah. Nah, that's that shit. What? I texted him right after. I'm like, hey, yo, see, why'd you want to sell this? This is wild. But I get it because he's humble. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say with that is that um, you clearly already know what your fans like from you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But you don't want to, like, you don't want to stay in that box that yeah. your fans are already putting you in since they already know, you know, what the like, typical sound when I is. When first from came you. out, right? So. I dropped the bottom. When I made it, I knew it was going to go. Like, okay. I just, I knew it was going to go. And then I followed up with Enemy because I knew it was going to go because of because the uh, the success of the bottom. Like, I just copied the same formula and did it in a different way. Like, the 808s, hard hitting beat with the catchy hook and, and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. and how old were you when you made that? Probably 18. Oh, word, word. Yeah, but yeah, as you were saying, compare um, with your sounds. Yeah, yeah. Just. Copying that formula, I knew it was you, gonna work. You think the same thing for after the club too? You just copied the same. It's formula? It's similar, but it's it's different. It's just it's the it's more so in the beats for me, like the production. I feel like nowadays production carries like the song more so. Okay. Like if I mean, you, it, it's the eight oh eight, bro. I'm trying to tell you, that's a key for new artists coming up too. <clears> like if you want to run numbers up real quick, eight oh eight is the key factor in the song. I'm telling you, unfortunately, it's the truth. We were talking about this earlier, uh, uh before the podcast, but um. Yeah, that may be the formula, but like, is that a way to stay relevant in the game? Is that a way to have longevity? Because I, I feel like I listen to a lot of a lot of music nowadays, and yeah, the beats and the production may be fire, but there's nothing making me want to gravitate and listen to it again. Well, Do I'm you, not talking timelessness. I'm talking more so, wouldn't you say relevancy numbers equals relevancy? Yeah, but if you're only relevant for a week at a time, are you really relevant? Because if I, if you're not if you're not yeah, the production is making me want to listen at first, but like yeah. the lyrics are trash, or all I'm doing is just like listening to the beat and just you know someone just mumbling over it. Yeah. I'm not gonna go listen to it again, and as a result, in a week, yeah, you may have run up your streams for that one week, but I mean, you, was you just ain't gonna be me, relevant. You just telling me like one of your favorite artists or group is was Migos. Their whole wave, their whole shit is all 808s, hard hitting beats with the catchy hooks and shit. Yeah, that's ATL though. That's, that's ATL. Um, yeah. You feel me? I mean, yeah, only. Sure. I mean, I ain't saying like that. It, it's like that for everyone. But I'm just saying like, with the way the music is nowadays, and what you were just saying about how production really carries everything. I'm just thinking. Do you think that should be the way it is now? Simply because I don't think the music that's here now is here to last. I just feel like there's a better way to do it. Like certain artists, they'll do it on some microwave shit where it's like. You play it a couple times, you're like, damn, this is fire. You keep playing it. By like the fifth time you hear it, it's like, I'm tired of this shit. But, you know, there's a better way to do it. Like, I feel like J. Cole's album this year uh, Off season. proves it. Like, he copied the formula a little bit. A lot of it had the 808s, the hard hitting beats, catchy hooks, and whatnot. And it shows like people was gassing it up. So, 
Mm. I mean, I guess that makes sense when you explain it like that because you think about like um, you once you mentioned the eight oh eights. I'm like thinking about after the club, and then you can say the eight oh eights on that is kind of similar to the eight oh eights on Hit Me. Yeah, you feel exactly. me? So I get I get what you mean in terms of uh, sticking with a formula that works. But how were you able to uh, sustain your originality when you're doing all that? Because you can't just copy paste, copy paste year after year and still expect it to work every single time. I think that's just a matter of it coming from a real place. Like after the club did come from a real place, like lyrically, I was actually saying real shit on that song for real. No, so, I'm here. Yeah, so I feel like that's the uh, way to stay relevant in the long term, you know? Okay. And like really touch people, but still copying the formula, still. Nah, I get that. I get formula, that. You know? I get that. Yeah. So what would you say on the tape was probably the song most challenging for you to work through most challenging to work through i mean it depends in what sense you're asking like just like from when you started it to to when you ended it when you knew it was complete probably anemic just because like i was worried about that song because like the lyrical content is so different from what i'm i usually put out Mm -hmm. like i was really like going in and kind of that's like my most gritty song that mm-hmm. i've ever made or ever put out i should say so i was like real nervous about how people would take to that but also like i had like eight different features on that song too and like, name it yeah just ended up going with my own i ended up just doing a beat switch instead and just making my own second half to it so somewhere out there there's other versions of this song with verses on yeah it. in my in my vault for sure there's a Many different versions. Oh, uh, hey, shit! Think about one day, you know, million dollar idea. <laughs> Just throw it out there, shit. If you ever bored one day, yeah. put out a mega remix. I was thinking about that too. Yeah, put out an anemic remix. Put just yeah. all the verses, attach it in. I'll probably be some fire. You know, just I was gonna do a deluxe for the tape. I was gonna do deluxe, but I'm not gonna do it though. If you do, put crazy yeah, on I was the deluxe. That's that was gonna do that. No, too. I'm here. I'm telling you right now, because when you put it out, I, I'm. I get why you left it off the tape, but I think that would have been a smooth. It just didn't fit. It just didn't fit. Like, it fits perfectly, bro. What you talking sonically, about? Sonically, I feel like it's it's more like happy vibes, and the whole Nova is not not, not even one song on Nova that's happy. I want to say crazy's like happy. I would like. It sounds like summertime, like on a beach, vibing and shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the, the rest of the tape is like no just, bullshit. Calm and shit. Yeah, you write you write about Nova and the vibe it gives you. Like, were you going through it when you made when you made the album, bro? Because I'm not gonna lie to you, the song with CD Rose, like I was going through it with the shorty I was talking okay. to at the time. At this yeah, time, I'll pause the music for that. Nah, yeah. Go ahead, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the song with CD Rose, I like I was going through it with some shorty at the time, and it just made me self reflect and just caught me in my field. So I'm like, yeah. damn, this shit's hitting, and I know this nigga. So I have I have to ask like what. What were you going through when you made this made this album? If you were going through anything at That's all, my shit, I mean, if you I'm, feel me? If I'm making like a tape or a compilation of, of different songs put together, chances are I was going through something. Like it has to come from like pain in a sense. Pain kind of like motivates me and uh, puts a battery in my back as far as I'm recording music. Like there's times where I'm recording with no feeling, and the song just doesn't last. It's like that's the microwave shit that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. It's like when it really comes from somewhere where I was feeling some type of way, it's like, you know, mm-hmm. you can tell when you hear it. Mm-hmm. Like, and that was one of them nights like this with CD Rose. That was one of them. That was it. So can I ask what you was going through? No, we're not talking about that. <laughs> but I heard the song almost didn't make the tape. Uh, It, was, it wasn't that. It was like. Because I was bro, tight when I heard that. I'm I like, can say that about 80% of the tape, bro. It's like. I'm always on to the next song. So, mm-hmm. like, there was mad songs in my vault that got lost that now that I'm listening back and I have time to reflect on the, uh, on that mixtape, I'm like, damn, I should have put this shit on there or this shit should have, you know what I'm saying? That's nah, why I was word. thinking about the deluxe anyways, too. I mean, hey, you still can with I that, was about honestly. To say, you might as well yeah. drop a deluxe if that's how you feeling, though, and you could have added this and this and this to it. Like, shit, yeah. like, why not? The reason why I fuck with that song is because um, I wasn't familiar with CD Rose before hearing that song, so mm-hmm. it was a nice way to introduce... Mm-hmm. Um, just heard in my library which i thought was really dope um but i also like you don't really do duets that often you feel me yeah. like with shorties like you'll do i've seen i've heard you want to feature uh with a shorty before but like an actual duet you don't do those too often so i really thought you know that Bro, was a next step in terms of you know i actually you know, really game. i really enjoy working with new artists like i work with artists in general it, i actually just 
the artists that I personally am hip to and that I be rocking with, I just, you know, don't have access to them, like, communication-wise. But uh, my manager had met CD Rose back in the day, and he just told me, like, yo, she's from your city, she's dope. I, I didn't, I never heard of her either. And he played me some shit, I'm like, damn, what the hell, how did I, how did I not know who this is? It's and the mass effect. We sent her the song, and she just sent it back within, like, a week and bodied that shit. And I was like, damn. Bro. Oh, so do y'all not have the chance to actually, like, uh, link up in person? Not to record it. After, like, we was just together, like, a week ago recording oh, okay. new shit. Okay, word. Hey, so there's new shit coming out. That's yeah. what's up. Uh, damn. That was a, that was a mail-in? Because I heard chemistry on that track, Most so it's surprising that yeah. that was a mail-in. Y'all sound, y'all were able to make that sound, yeah, like, yeah. very um, conducive with it being a mail-in. That's Everybody what's it sounded like y'all worked together in the past, the way the chemistry, or the chemistry y'all had I heard on that, that too. A lot of people be telling me they like how my voice sounds with a female artist. Like, together, the contrast, they say it sounds good. Nah, facts. Yeah. Like I when I heard that, I was like, what? She got shorties for me, too? That's crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear that from shorties too yeah, often. No, but you say, like, yeah. what? You want shorties? I got you. I bet. Mm. Um, so you said Anemic was probably your most challenging. Who is that, um, who's that artist that was on the end? Um, that was this, this uh, old school Jamaican artist from, uh, from like Kingston. Word, word. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that part was fire. That part was fire indeed. It's really a sample, actually. Is real. it? Just yeah, sample. That's okay. What I thought. Word. Because yeah. I know you linked up, because I know um, you and Phil had that track with like Nemesis, so I just didn't yeah, yeah. know. I got another song with Nemesis. I got, I'm got. i sitting on a hit with Nemesis right now. I'm probably going to drop in 2022. Word. You can't, you can't just say that and say probably. Are you going to drop that? No. Like, I think Tyler knows at this point with the short time that I've known him, if he says he's doing some shit, I'm going to press him about it. <laughs> Until he does that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm gonna press him about that shit. <laughs> so if you say it, hey, you better come out with that shit. Yeah. But word, um, is your are your favorite st song still the same ones you told me if I fall and um and after the club after the club still? Wait, what did I tell you? It started off being after the it started off being the intro and the outro. So if I fall and struggle, baby, but then you switched them three, out the them outro. three are my favorite. But for real, like the song that I play the most, well, really the only song I actually play for real is after the club. And struggle maybe sometimes, but yeah. after the club is my favorite, just cause like I feel like I didn't waste a bar. Like every line meant something to me. Mm -hmm. Like was was from a real place for real. No, nah, and I wouldn't. You wouldn't think so either, cause the way the song sounds, it sounds like if you wasn't really paying attention, it would just sound like some bullshit, I guess. But mm -hmm. nah, I was actually saying shit on there. After outside the hook, like on the verse, I was really saying shit. I'm catching up. I'm catching a pattern. The songs that you you really like garner attention and, and get get people like really interested in the songs you you put your all into essentially yeah that's like a piece of me for real you feel me you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like now i'm gonna just let this rock real quick mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not even a word. Bro. I fuck with that. That nigga said I'm like, that's just not even a word, but I fuck with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nobody noticed that. Nobody, <laughs> nigga. I was that person. Bro, it sounded good. <laughs> nah, man. That's the shit with black culture. Like, you can we make up words all the time. You feel me? She was on repeat. So this 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 album is mixtape album mixtape mixtape mixtape's been out almost a month now, right? For real? Yeah, it's it, it, it dropped on the nineteenth. Oh, yeah, I know it's crazy. That's how I felt when you told me when you decide was a year old. I was like, really? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So, in your opinion, like, what what song do you think has garnered the most attention from fans? For this on this tape, yeah, on this tape, after the club. For oh, sure. Really? Oh, okay. Nah, that's, this, this is well, the one. This it's been the one. Yeah. nah. I mean, that's us, but you don't know if everyone's been feeling the same way. This one and you never know. And the single, um, Psycho. Psycho. <laughs> that, yeah, and that's not really one of my favorites on there at all. But like, the UK is fucking with Psycho heavy for whatever reason. I got mad new fans from UK just hitting me up. I think it's <clears throat> daily. It's those it's those 808 drums. Yeah, that's why it's that drill. You, you know they the like drill the drums. drill. Nah, like when he told me, cause right, I listened to Psycho, and I didn't think he was like trying to do the drill shit until he told me. Yeah. So when I went back and listened to it, and I was like, 
Oh, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. It don't because sound like drill because the way I'm flowing on it. And like, you don't hear people singing on drill too often. Exactly. You feel me? So like, even if like you're rapping as well, um, because you do like the R and B twist to it, exactly. it works well with the drill. That's why I fuck with that and mm -hmm. that can work well together. People calling your boy the king of king of R and B drill. I think that's what they say. <laughs> nah, I mean <laughs> shit. Bryson <laughs> fell off, so. Bryson was never doing Thank you, real, thank you. Thank you. Got me up on that soul, nigga. Trap soul. Bro, that nigga was nothing. <laughs> that nigga was never anything crazy. No, 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 I didn't say all that. I, I did not say that. That's that's him. I said it. <laughs> I, all I said was he was not doing R&B drill. He was doing R. He was doing R&B. So if y'all could see the look Cat just gave me right now as I said that, y'all would start crying. Are you a Bryson fan, Cat? Oh. Yeah, yeah, she she got it. I know. By the way, you were playing with your hair, I couldn't tell. <laughs> but, um, but um, yeah, to go off of that, I fuck with Bryson. I fuck with Bryson too. I didn't fuck with uh, his like last tape really, but Trap Souls and Certified Classic. And with that sound, I really think that sound shifted how R and B was made. I mean, shout out to my nigga Black. Black followed up right after Bryson. You feel me? So that type of sound when. R&B niggas just started rapping out of nowhere. Yeah. It works. Uh, yeah, it worked all the way to here. Like, shit. And it works for some people. Um, Fact. So, how has... Because I asked you this the first time I met you, but it's been some time later, so I'm going to ask you this again. But how has um, the newfound attention affected your personal life? Has it really... It's not really chilling? newfound attention. I feel like I've been had the same consistent attention since I was 18 like senior year of high school like I would be walking through the hallways and people be like bro I just I would know the craziest shit this is like cuz I'm not like big like that for real for I'm real hip. but I'm like hood big like in, you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, Boston you know. Massachusetts whatever yeah, you know locally yeah so like I would like be walking to practice and shit like that basketball practice senior year whatever even junior year too but senior year for real for real I would hear cars like blasting my shit and I'll just be like yo that is a mind fuck that's crazy just things like that I'll be in the hallway walking through walking to class or whatever people be playing it or they be singing my song when they see me and shit like that it's crazy but you know. yeah you better than me I'd let that shit go to my head real quick what you wouldn't be able to tell me shit if I was you I mean he's older <laughs> now he's, <laughs> he's older now so like hey when he was probably younger yeah. he probably had needed to have a lot of conversations when you were like Yo, relax. She just like my music. <laughs> she just like my music. Relax. No, I still gotta have those combos. <laughs> nah, I'm hip. Cause that's what sucks, especially like when, like you said, you're known locally, but you're not that big. So like, yeah. life is still regular. You feel like exactly. you're moving through life as you were always moving, but because you got certain eyes on you, certain shit just becomes annoying. So I but, get that. But no bullshit. I'm getting tired of like being slept on now like for a long time I was kind of cool like I was calling myself the best kept secret because I feel like I am the best talk kept your secret. shit but like I'm really getting tired of being underrated and fucking you know what not makes, getting the credit I deserve so. what makes you feel that way like what makes you feel like you're underrated I just feel like I just feel like I make better shit than 90% of what's out right now or it's what's been out for the last couple of years for real for like real. from the area or not in general, general even industry people like well, let's I, keep I think I'm stack. like that so <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just, you know, that's why, I, I, like, my plan for 2022 and, and uh, forward is, like, I'm going to start playing the numbers game, like, just dropping more hits. I, I was trying to stay away from hits for a long time because I wasn't trying to be known as, like, oh, he just makes radio music. He just, he don't make no real shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, like. Do you think, do you think some of those songs were like that? Yeah. Some of them were. But not in, like, a bad way. It was still, like, good quality. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Like, when you said you weren't fucking with Enemy like that, I still think, like, shit. Me in the college setting that I was in when that shit you came out. You could bump out, that anytime. It fit, it fit right fact. in, you feel me? But it that's what right I'm saying. In. Like, that's why I got to play that game. I got to play the, the, I got to start playing the game, this industry game, for real. Because so. it might be bullshit to you, but a lot of other people can relate to that shit. That's a fact. You feel me? And I was going to ask, because you mentioned that earlier, and I was like, what? Well, because I already had, like, probably some reasons, but why do you think you are as slept on as you are why do you think personally one think so? where i come from like just coming from massachusetts Mass. it's hard to really get it out like to get your shit to that next level it's real hard there's only been like a handful <coughs> of people to do it and then like I, I always i was having this combo with my boy the other day too i feel like if i was actually born and raised from new york 
even Cali too, but say if I was from New York, I think I would have already been on for real. You believe so? Just because of like, there's no, there's less egos. It's more like community based. Everybody's pushing your shit. It's mm -hmm. like out here, it's kind of like everybody knows each other. Mm -hmm. So it's like, who are you really put? You could put my, play my shit, put, put my music onto somebody new who doesn't know me, but it's going to stay out here. It's not going to venture out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I hear you. I mean, let's keep it a rack, right? You dropped when you decide a year ago. Yeah. Stayed quiet for a little bit. Yeah. And then you came back with Nova about a year later. And these are only your first two tapes. You mm -hmm. were making music way before that. But in terms of actual tapes, these are your two. And when you dropped them, when you dropped them, there was a buzz around you at, around sure. the time. You feel me? So yeah. I think the thing is, it's just a game of consistency. Like if you drop, yeah, no, we going definitely. If you drop, we gonna talk about you, but your music is only gonna buzz for a certain period of time. Now, definitely. when you get to the point where you start making timeless hits and timeless music, where you, we can just play it year and year after, which I think you have some well, right nah, now. I but think like when that's it comes the only to reason that, why I'm even still. That's what I'm saying. Because like, you I got some made of that. them. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. So you got people, that. People still sending me videos that I'm playing something I made from 2016. Like I had a song "Better Off as Friends." People still send me videos to this day. See, so here's my thing with that. You got these two tapes. These are your only two tapes, though. Yeah. Everything else in the past were just singles. So now the fact that. When people are looking up Tyler Loyal instead of just these random singles from the years in the past, now that they, they got full bodies of mm -hmm. work, it's going to be easier to garner that Definitely. type of attention because people actually have shit to go off of. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you say that, you know, you're sick of, like, how slept on you are, I get that because you have been doing this for a while, but realistically, you only got two projects. That's a you fact. You feel me? So... Technically, you, you're still relatively new. No, I definitely am still a, a new artist for sure. Yeah, like, so that's what I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. Like, I think people out here, you I'm know, I'm still young too. I got time. Like, still yeah, young, in fact. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even like pressed about that too much. I'm just saying that's like been my thoughts because you no, know, I just feel like I should be, I should be able to do certain things that I can't do right now yet. Nah, it's I feel like motivation yeah. for you. Motivation yeah, it's definitely factor, motivation, hundred like, percent. I definitely yeah. think when you're out in um. New York, just being in that scene definitely helped you out, at least. Yeah. Especially when it came out to the music, because what would, would have you been able to... Um, would you have been able to make the Critch connection had you been out here? Nah, for real, no. Word, right? So that's the thing that, you know... Jay Guapo, too. Exactly. Like that, was a, that was the most spur-of-the-moment thing. Like It was like, I DM'd him, yo, where you at, type shit, and he's like, yo, pull up. Yeah, so, like... I get what you mean by that when you say like mass puts its limits on you because you only have so many resources when you could be in New York you hear someone's around if someone's in the studio next door you can make a connection like that so I get that but Definitely. Uh, I wouldn't really say you know you're like a kept secret out here I think at least to the to our age group everybody out here I think knows you no I but wouldn't say it's I, just the market out here yeah, that's how I would word it I'm the market about out here like is different outside of here for real it's, just, mm -hmm. it's like a just some east coast shit. underground dude you know what I'm saying no I feel you New York would have been a good look had you been out there mm. no I feel that and they probably I get why UK I'm not tripping no, shit. no I know you're not it tripping. makes for a better story too like I'm here you know what I'm so saying hard. story of the come up nah facts exactly. it's like I think of other dudes that came from like our city and I'm like I can't name that many names so the fact that that shit's possible, hey, you really can't say that, uh, you really can't say, you know how like everybody wants to say just living out here, you just can't make it, you yeah. just can't do shit, everyone, mm -hmm. but like when I got like the selected individuals that have just been doing their thing, grinding on their own and they were able to do it, I'm like, oh, Yo, you can't it's say possible. it. It's possible. It is possible. possible. Your grind. approach just got to be different. That's yeah. all it is, really. That's all it is, really. Nah. That grind, man. For real, for real. But what's your plan for 2022? Like, this year was a little slow year for you besides the mixtape dropping. You dropped a single. What do you got in store for us next year? Uh, you like I said, man, I'm playing the numbers game. All hits 2022. <laughs> your boy's going to go crazy. Yeah? Yes, sir. Oh, cool. I'm going to go crazy. I'm telling you. Say that. When we get in that first hit. I haven't thought about that so far yet. I nah, you know. good. You good. Um, you said that this tape was um, a different sound for you, right? You were starting to mm -hmm. experiment with different sounds. Definitely. Um, how did you? How do you feel about the like the reception the, from, the reception from yeah. that? Yeah. I I, I you like were nervous it, about I, the intro. I was nervous. I'm surprised that people really took to it the way they did. Like, probably like, with there's eight songs on it. Mm -hmm. Six out of the eight is. Six out of the eight. 
Nah, fuck that. Seven out of eight songs is something I have not done before. So I was really nervous. Like, I felt like... And we, but I, this is actually funny, too, because this girl called me the other night, and she was like, I really like After the Club. I'm like, I appreciate you. She's like, but I'm going to be real. Like, I'm still stuck on your old shit. Like, and, and that's cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mm. still love at the end of the day, but at the same time, it's like, come on, like... Catch up? You got to catch up, too. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, give us some time. The tape yeah, just yeah. dropped. No, no. I, I'm like, bro, it's been... She called me... This is probably like two weeks ago. So she called me. That was her wrap up after listening to it for two weeks. But you gotta let music sit for a little while. I'm mm-hmm. hip. I'm yeah. hip. Nah, I'm hip. That's why. That's why. But I, I get it though, cause I be doing the same shit myself. Mm-hmm. Like my artists that I fuck with. Do you think you're gonna cut? You're gonna find yourself like trying new things more as a result of getting positive feedback from this album or? Mixed I up? have to, bro. Like that's the only way I stay interested. Just trying new things and experimenting. Otherwise, I get tired. That's what happened with um. All my earlier shit, like after following that formula for so long, it, even though it was working, I was just like, bro, I really don't care. Even if this is my way to get popping, like I was like, this is not fun to me. I'm going to end up, you know what I'm saying? Nah, if you're doing something you don't really care about, it's only going to go so far. So I had to break it down and start from the ground point again just to, you know, mm-hmm. to really enjoy it and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. Word. Uh, who are you looking to work with right now? If you could just throw names out there. Man. Cozy Rich. <laughs> Cozy Rich? What's up? Who's that? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. We're going to edit that part out of the podcast. Wait, no, nah, no. Nah. Who's Cozy Rich? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, ask one more time. Hey, Kat, you know who Cozy Rich is? <laughs> we gonna, we're going to edit that part out of the podcast. Wait, no. Nah, am I look? Is that actually somebody I should know for real? <laughs> Yo, this is lit. <laughs> no, who's that? one but the with? Cozy Rich? He's Cozy Rich? <laughs> You're Cozy Rich? <laughs> oh, shit. This nigga want me to square up with him. My bad, bro. Nah, nah, don't Y'all call me bro that. after that. Don't Y'all. call me bro after that. You just broke my heart. And I'm keeping Sorry. that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. But, uh, anyways, what I was going to say, um, yeah. Who are you looking to work with, you know? This could be this could be actual, like, real collabs coming soon or, future, uh, or dream collabs or whatever. But, you know, uh-huh. if you say within the next two or three, who are you trying to link up with? Who you haven't linked up with already? How I haven't linked up with. Yeah. I think I'm supposedly featured on one of my homegirls on uh, Journey Montana. She's a new, she's like up and coming artist from New York. She's from right. Harlem. She dope too. Um, shit. Like I said, I don't be like really thinking about working with other people unless it ha- like, it's just always like a natural thing. It just happens when it happens. Spur of the moment. Like the people shit. I want to work with, it's like, I, we don't have no type of, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. So. Nah, I feel you. I feel that, that, that collab you were trying to like do the other day. What? I don't, I didn't want to mention it. Oh, you know, yeah, until yeah, you, yeah, 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 Cause if that does happen, what, mm-hmm. what vibe of the week, month straight. <laughs> 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 but, um. I don't even know who you're talking about. Who? Shay. Oh yeah! Oh shit! I I need to make that happen. Nah, for facts. Sure. facts. Crew, he's hard. Nah, he is hard. Nah, facts. Happen. Um. All right. So not, nah, but I I like when you like do features. I I think everybody that featured you featured with you so far has done good. Like if I yeah. think back, like I said, I like the most of feature. Um, the Phil features classic. CD Rose did what she had to do. Jay Guabo did what he had to do. Critch, you actually kept up well with Critch. So that's great for you, youngin. Um, so I think I feel you, like I bring the best out of people. To be honest, I'm talk your shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that either. No, I, I didn't even mean it like that. I'm just saying, like when you're working with people, yeah, I think I'm good at stuff like that. Like, you know, just mm-hmm. knowing how to put the pieces together and whatnot. All right. So yeah. what do you need, like Tyler Loyal? Because you said you're tired of being underrated. You're tired of being the best kept secret. What does Tyler Loyal need to get him to where he wants to be? That's a good question. I guess it's just the notoriety, like numbers and stuff like that. Like, is your goal to remain independent for as long as I can? Okay. On until your masters? Until, of course. Okay. Of course. Okay. Just make keep that the goal. That's the yeah. trying to put that all, <laughs> all on the young artists. Like, yo, no matter how far you go in the game, no matter how many major fucking label contracts they put on the table you read through that it's shit a, make sure you retain your masters you you're not, not making shit off your music unless you retain your masters but you're not gonna own your masters if you don't have no um no leverage for real that's what i'm trying to say yeah, what yeah. do you need 
You need the numbers. Numbers. Everything is all numbers for real. Okay, like. so and I hate numbers. I always hated math, all that shit. Mm. That's, that's do you, why. Do you have a team that does your marketing for you? Um, I mean, like my team is real small. We just do everything like collectively in house. Like, like three of us for real, four mm. of us, probably four of us. Mm. But yeah. So marketing is something that we need to work on. I marketing bet. for sure, but also like that. Like I was telling you, the formula, bro. The formula is the first step, and then the second is the marketing. But the formula is like. It depends if that's what you want to go, the route you want to go. Like somebody like Brent Fires, he don't gotta follow no formula. Like he's doing his own shit. And well, he's been working. doing the same thing for t- t- two, three tapes now, bro. He Brent Fires, has, but he has it's, it's but it's different than what anybody in the other think, artists is doing. I think he doesn't drop consistently enough to the point where people get um, diluted with his music or they get that tired is of that it. Too. It's that just is the true. fact that he doesn't put that much music out. So when people do hear it, it's the, like, ah, oh, word, we got that print. Yeah, yeah, like if I, we know what to expect. It's I just compare, we like hearing new shit. Yeah, like if anything, wasting time was like the track that was sounded different from everything, everything else. else yeah. But that's only because Pharrell and the Neptunes were on Produce that shit. That, you feel yeah. me? But if I was to play fucking Mercy. Dead Man Walking to um, anything on fuck the anything world. on fuck the world, I could play some on fucking Sonder or um, Lost Child or whatever that tape was called, and. They all kind of sound similar, you feel me? Yeah. His content is kind of the same. I feel you. But it's working for him. No no, no one else in R&B My is point, really doing that. Yeah, so, like, I get it. It works for him. It that's works R&B for him. R&B future, as you like to call him. There's oh, not he, enough, Brent Fires is there's the not R&B a, future. Yeah, there's not another, another nigga like him in R&B, so he has created his own lane. I mean, I was even having this conversation the other day with other people about Future and Young Thug, just, like, how Future started... With where he was at, I thought he was terrable when he first really? came out. He had, I, I hated Tony. He was way too much auto-tune. I hated Tony Montana with passion. He, he, he was way too much auto tune. He like, wasn't nice with the auto tune. His yet. production Facts. was trash. For as me, well, but his it voice was raw. It was raw, bro. He had that like deep ass voice. It sounded like, like the most like crazy gremlin nigga singing some shit that was fire to me but like you know I how like that. once somebody learns like once somebody perfects their sound yeah, for sure. yeah. that's when everything just starts Not crazy definitely. which no, is something no. that i think you're starting to do right now exactly. which is why you're able to make songs like after the club but um but now with future when he first started off i was hearing shit like tony montana shit and things like that not not like shit i, I like shit but uh, tony <laughs> montana just with things like nah, that you didn't like, like, you didn't like turn, on, turn on the lights on the, you know, like no, that shit i made fire. fun of oh, i made fun of oh that my shit god so, nigga bro. did, did you hear that man singing on that shit yes that shit was I'm hard bro. bro bro it was wrong i'm looking whoa. that's exactly what he sounds like bro fire bro i could scrape a metal pan and it sound better than that <laughs> like let's not do that yeah this nigga but, disrespecting but then like later he started to you know fuck with his sound and young thug did the same thing once those two perfected their sound it was up for them and it's crazy some people like really no. try to see they really try to pit thug and future where well, i think future got the one up against thug but i think that's only because he's been out longer i feel like um, personally yeah. i feel like thug started like making it once he started pronouncing his words Personally, sometimes he still doesn't. I feel like he, but no, nah, he, but like before, like this now. nigga was nothing but mumble. Like, I couldn't have understand half the shit he was saying, but like once he started speaking and I could understand what he was saying, that's when for me, like, all right, I could fuck with this nigga. Facts, I still, I still don't know what he's saying on lifestyle. I go crazy to this day. Facts. <laughs> and shit, that's when Lil Baby went up too once he started pronouncing his words. It was yeah, awful no, for nigga. Once Lil Baby started, once you understood what he was a- saying, my nigga, it was done. By Gunna, done. <laughs> it was done. Nah, that really was by Gunna. Too. Facts. Drip too hard. I listened to that shit the other day. Drip too hard, bro. That and was I was my like, God too. damn. Like, because I. Und- I listened to Drip Too Hard the other day, and I was like, damn, these niggas were really nice, but, like, we didn't really see it like that. Because you listen to Baby's old shit, and he still sound like that. The the difference is his, his bars did get better, but how he sounds, he still sounds like that. But No bullshit. I like Baby's old shit better than his new shit. I still fuck with him, but I like his old. Like, I was uh, on him early on. Like He had this song called Narcs from, like, his first I feel like second. Baby is just on everything now at this point that is hard to keep up. Like, his old shit... I just listen to more, so it's easier to just resonate with I me. I feel like he was like experimenting that. back then. 
I just think it's. A, yeah. Were you tapped in like that for real back then? To the shit? With baby? Yeah. Yeah. Street gossip, all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's my shit. The first Even song I heard by him was My Dog. That was the first. Uh, freestyle. That tape. Freestyle. That yeah. first tape. That yeah, whole that tape. was the first thing I heard from him. I didn't like. I thought Gunna was trash when I first heard him. Um, Drip Season 3. I always thought, I thought Gunna was, was better than Baby. I didn't think Drip so, Season 3 was trash. Three was, I just Drip thought. Drip Season 3 no, no, was the I didn't best think, shit I ever heard in my life when it came out at the Dead time. Dead ass. I'm That's where you and everybody was telling me. I didn't think Drip Season 3 was trash. I just thought. It was all one song. That's My all nigga that I remember. Up, saying that. Lean in it cut. that shit was crazy. Nah, I'm hip. I just thought it was all one song. But then Wanna came out, and hey, they, a lot of that tape is forgettable, but there are some joints on that shit. Met Gala to this day, any day, any day, Met Gala can turn off in this bitch. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, what, is, what are some of your favorite artists that you're rocking with right now? Because I want to see where you get the influence from in your sound. Who you listening to right now? Man, Don't I say Drake. I already know Drake is in there. I listen to a lot of like older shit, like not old old, but like I just do a lot of research because the newer the newer music just hasn't been sticking with me for a while now. So like I'll be listening to like if I'm try if I alright, so like trap type of stuff. This album was hard as hell, by the way. I I'll give my boy a shout out, shout out Roddy man, she was hard. Say something, bro. I never said the album Say wasn't hard. Bro. I never said Say the something, album, bro. I never said the album wasn't hard. I simply said this nigga is just way too overrated at this point. Y'all are giving him his flowers way too early. He thinks he's about to drop trash on Friday. He thinks, yo, what was you saying before, before we started the episode? Roddy's what hard. You, no, what did you say about his album coming out on Friday? I said, I don't know if it's going to be hard or not because he hasn't dropped all year, but it's just, but this shit was hard nigga, as hell. You Didn't said you, that shit no was going to You hey, said nah, it was about to be all hits. That's what no, this said. nigga's capping. This nigga said it's about to flop. I ain't hearing. No, I did I not say that. that. You ain't said I that. I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, this nigga capping. He's lying on me, man. Oh, he's lying, Don't fuck up the Roddy bag for him, bro. Roddy, bro, Roddy is that guy, real shit. Nah, he's not. Nah, he that guy, but I'm just saying, like, the way y'all, the way the music, well, not the music industry, the way fans be talking. Talking about this nigga. My phone. It's just like, yo, you would think he's the second coming of. I think he's who's like. Who's the hottest nigga out right now? Baby, baby and Dirt. You would and think dirt. he's the second coming of Baby and Dirt. The way the way the way people talk about him, like he doesn't me, even bro. drop. For me, he fills the void of Future. Like like not not saying that like because I still listen to Future. Future's one of my top play artists, but he feels like a new version of Future and Thug combined type shit. Like he's like that new lane for that. That's just hard. He's just dope in LA, cause like you think about you think about the up and comers in LA. Not that many, you know. We don't got that many top niggas from Cali right now. That's carrying for the West Coast sound. You feel me? Like when Kendrick had his run, he was running shit for LA. YG had his run for a little bit. Nipsey was but like, there. Doing Nipsey his was thing. there. Nipsey was there. Dropped Victory Lap. Those two, Timeless. those two dropped racks in the middle. Nipsey died, and in my mind, they're on past the torch to Roddy, and has allowed you know Roddy to do everything that he's doing right now, which is great. That's why I put so much on Roddy's success because, in a way, I do think Nipsey passed him off the torch um, with racks in the middle, and they got a Grammy off that shit. So you know, shout out an RP Nip for that shit. But um, when I was looking at the track list. Not the track list. He put out the feature list for the album. Everybody that's featured on that shit, fam. I, don't, I haven't even heard it yet. That Fabio track is going to go crazy. <laughs> that Fabio track is going to go crazy. Uh, Baby's on the tape. Future's on the tape. Uh, let's see who else Both is on the tape. Both of them been featured on everyone's projects. This shit, Fucking I swear to God. Takeoff is on it. 21 Savage, Gunna, Ty Dolla Sign, Kodak, and Jamie Foxx. And there's 18, 18 tracks, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like half of it. That shit. I mean, I'm gonna listen cool. to it. I don't think he's a. Ter I don't think he's bad at all. I think he's really good. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, like the level y'all, the way y'all talk about him. I get it. It's Bro, just you, like you know, damn, damn well. like slow down. You know, you can sing every line on the box. I can't. You can't. I can't. I can't either. You can't. Nah, I can't. It's a good song, but I'm not gonna say like I had it on repeat. Bro, no, I'm I, just I played saying. Enemy. Shit, but if you I play played off Enemy the grid. way more than I played anything on this on this album. Hop off. I'm not even like, that's love. I'm fucking with you. That's fucking love. With you. That's <laughs> love. Like, bro. I love. Like, yo. No, 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 Roddy's no. shit is good, but like for me, it's it's just not like I'm not gonna run back to listen to his shit. If it's on, it's on. I hear you. you feel me? I hear you. That's just me though. But Shorties yeah. fuck with it, so I fuck with it. You feel me? Oh, my fault, brother. <laughs> my fault, play. Shit. You got a dog. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. So right, um, yeah. so here we are. Uh, second tape I like that you're consistently dropping music 
And I do think, I don't know what your schedule is with music. I think if you know, come out with something every now and then, that'll keep the attention of everybody, bro. Like mm-hmm. I said, that that crazy track, you and Mosa, that's a nice little connection that you got right there. I'm listening to After the Club. No bullshit, the ad libs in the back remind me of Mosa. So I'm like, oh, I like that pairing already. You feel me? Um, How? What? How do you remind you that? The ad libs? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm perfect. That's not, it's not, it just sounds like him. I don't want to play it, but like I don't know. There was like one part in the verse. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> I got to play it. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. That's interesting. I just fucked with it. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Word. Uh, yeah, this shit make enemies. This money turn me to my foot. I can't be friends with these. Don't need no high school reunion for them to remember me. I left my marks. Those just sound like him. Maybe I have my boy do the Atlas for me. Oh, really? Maybe. I thought that was you. Never know. Nigga, that was him. Never know. I thought you. No, I thought Tyler was saying he did the Atlas. You never know. Mostly could have did them for me. I mean, they sound nice. <laughs> if, it, if, if it is, then it is. But yeah, it sound funny. nice. I like that connection. Um, and hey, I gave, I gave my dog a little concept for that crazy video. If y'all, you know, that, that's, that, was yeah. a, that shit was a fire concept. Do that. Do you plan on making? Do you plan on making any music videos for this mixtape? Or they got We're one with if I it. fall. They got one right now. And psycho. And oh, psycho. We, might, right, right, we right. might do um. I'm supposed to shoot after the club, like next month. That that would be dope. Okay. But it's just we're we're trying to do like a party vibe, so it's gonna be say. it's gonna be a little hard to do. But do if that. you get a house, oh, you gotta get a house. And we're trying to do a video for crazy too. Facts. So we gotta go to like Miami or some shit. Fa- yeah, that's what I was gonna say because it's like it's cold up here. It's winter time, so like you can't can't really get the vibe off that you want to get off when it's cold up here. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like. So, a video with like nights like this would be great during the winter, you feel me? But the other, yeah, nice. like you need somewhere warm for that. I feel you. I feel you. I right, bet. Yeah, I want to ask a little, like, besides okay. music, like, what do you do in your free time to like decompress and get your mind off shit? Because I know you ain't thinking about music 24 7. Like, what do you do in mm-hmm. your free time? Play basketball, sometimes. catch them on the court, pick up game. Hey, shit. I'll be doing random shit. Like, I just started picking up a guitar. I'm, I'm getting kind of nice at it, too, for real. Okay. Um, shit. Got some samples coming? Do you play any other instruments? I'll be in nature, stuff like that, like hikes and whatnot. Hey. My man's mm-hmm. on his transcendentalism shit. I like that. I link shorty, stuff like that. Do you ever experience uh, writer's block? Hell yeah, but that's a, that's a normal thing. How but, do you get over that? But, like, I, I and seen does that a, um, keep you from how you release music? I seen a Lucky interview the other day. Lucky, he was talking yeah. to Lucky, no, this dude, this rapper named Lucky. Oh, he's an underground starts rapper. Starts with an I, right? Ends with yeah, an I. Ends with an I. Yeah, I know what you mean. And he was saying he was talking to Earl Sweatshirt, and Earl said that basically writer's block should be non-existent because you should be creating, you should be saying what you're feeling in that moment, even if it's not like the most fire shit. Mm-hmm. You should be able to come up with words like just based off of what you've been doing, what you're feeling, and stuff like current thoughts, shit that you've been thinking of, like that. And that's real shit. I didn't even, you know what I'm saying, never thought about it like that. And that's how I made after the club. Actually, like I was like, you were saying, I'm about just, I'm about to just speak my mind, like how I'm feeling, and then it just came out. Like I freestyled the whole song, probably in like 18 minutes, literally, literally, like. So like, mm, I feel like I haven't had writer's block as as much as I used to in the past, like. So have you ever had anything where like you started a joint and then left it for dumb long Bro, and then came a, back to there's it? There's mad songs like that. Anemic is one of them. Like I said, like I wouldn't finish the song just because my my uh, manager was like, "Bro, this is hard. You gotta finish it." I'm like, Whatever. How long did that take you, Anemic? From like you know Bro, from I, making that it. was like the most I ever spent on any song, for real. Even the production too. Like we and my homie Berg had brought in this uh, violin slash cello player. Uh, 99 the producer and he bodied that shit if you listen the closely outro, there's right? like on anemic yeah the outro yeah, yeah on yeah, the outro I know, the second half, yeah. I know exactly throughout the whole about. shit though but on the outro for real for real yeah, he's playing violin and shit and that was like damn that's like my favorite part of favorite aspect element anything to that whole song like so but with anemic you said your manager was the one that convinced you to put it on yeah like, that was my manager it, pushing for that shit but have there ever been songs where like where you were like you started after the it? club after the club wasn't supposed to be on the tape i just put it on there because i needed it i'm like bro i'm not putting this, Did you not, i'm not gonna like this tape if i don't put after the club on it. but you fucked with after the club yeah that was like the one that i was really in the intro too yeah but my question is 
a song where you started it, thought it was trash, left it, and then after playing it a little while later, you're like, yo, that's actually kind of hard. Was that crazy? Like it? Crazy. crazy. Was one of them oh, crazy. Okay. Crazy. I made in you like. You thought it was trash when you first made it. I made crazy and that was another one of them ones that I made in like 15 minutes flat. And then like, Damn. I, I just left it in the vault. And then like, I was like, my my boy was like, yo, this shit is hard. It's like a hit on the low. I like, fuck it. And I called my boy Moses. I'm like, yo, put a verse on this shit. He's like, bet. So he sent it back. Facts. I just did it. Just put she it like Beyonce, cause Beyonce still Beyonce without Jay Z. Attitude on can't replace me. Nah, sure. Hey, I, I, <laughs> I gotta tell you this. I gotta tell you this version. I have it. Hold up. A different version? No, no. Just I was I was trolling him. <laughs> okay. Shit, I'm intrigued. Nah, Moses did his thing on that shit. Facts. And I like what he's doing over there in Houston. Good shit. I'm looking out for that track with uh Cash. Facts. <laughs> I'll be looking out. For, hey, I think he said. Cash hopped on Clementine. Hold up, hold up. Without Beyonce, Attitude. Crazy. She like Beyonce, cause Beyonce still Beyonce. Without Beyonce, Attitude. Beyonce. That's crazy. Then it's probably make Beyonce hate me. Nigga, this nigga just kept putting Beyonce, man. Like Beyonce, because she's still Beyonce without Beyonce. Like. Nah, 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 nah. All right, bet. Um, so, last couple questions I just want to ask, right? If somebody is new, never heard of you at all, what's the first thing they should go to? Where should they start? Probably start at Nova because, actually, yeah, I say start at Nova just because it's, like, definitely the most uh, individuality. Like, it's the most of me, like, experimenting and just... Uh, uh, What's it, um, like free thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I was just literally, I didn't write one word on this whole mixtape. And that's, it's just a mixtape just for my fans, really. Mm-hmm. But like, I didn't write one word down. I was just speaking my mind on it a little bit. And I feel like there's, like I said, there's some songs in the vault where I was doing a, a better job at that, for sure. But like, all in all, like, Nova compared to the rest of anything I dropped, I feel like if you want to know who I am specifically for that, like Nova would be the best representation for the most part, but word still, word yeah. Do you you said you don't fuck with enemy? Are there any other old shit you don't fuck with anymore? Nah, cause I already deleted all of them. I deleted mad songs, bro. Even the ones that are out? No, I'm talking about the ones that are no, out. No, the ones that I put out. I've deleted so many songs that I've dropped, and my fans <laughs> be complaining. My fans hate that shit. They'll hit me up like, bro, why the fuck would you delete this, bro? So options? And they'll get on my ass. You still have options? No, options. That's what I'm saying. Everything that's out, I, I didn't you delete. Deleted. I didn't delete these ones. Like, if you see it out there right now, I didn't delete Hold it. Hold up, nigga. I'll no, tell I'm, you. I'm there's a bunch about, of them. There's I'm a bunch about. of them that I have deleted off of, out, that was out. I've deleted them. But you wouldn't know because oh. I deleted them. <laughs> So you wouldn't know. I wouldn't. Most of his shit is out. It's still out. There. No, 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 no. No, he, no he I that. wouldn't delete nothing. That you know what I'm saying. If it's up there, then I didn't delete it for no, a reason. I feel you. I feel you. Um, I would have deleted Enemy too, but my yeah, they would have got crazy on me for real. Nah, for real. Crazy. You would have been crazy for deleting. Because that's part that's of just, your story. Yeah, that's yeah, part of your story. Nah, I'm, yeah. I'm done deleting shit though. For real, I'm done deleting shit. <laughs> like, fam, because you gotta go, bro. You gotta was, keep the highlights, bro. There was one night I got like I don't do I don't smoke I don't do no type of drugs right. Word, but there was you. one night and like two years ago, 2019 I think I, I had got super super high, <laughs> and like I was overthinking everything, bro. I deleted like six songs in that one night. And like I remember, like Man, after I line. came down from it, I was like, Shit, I was tripping. Why did I delete all this shit? And then like uh, probably like a few days later, I got mad DMs. Yo, what the? F- just tripping. Just go with you. Nah, it's shit. Crazy. I'm. I still got enemy between us. Gone for the summer. Level up. Starlight options. Yeah, they still on my library. Faithfully, facts. They gonna stay there too. Yeah, facts. I'm a mad shorties onto his music. That's what I try to do. Yeah. Like I try what I try to do if I got people that I know that make music, I try to sprinkle their music in where it fits. You feel me? So facts. if I got like It's a good DJ. Oh no, DJ facts. Movie. So if I got like women in the area and I'm like trying to put on local artists, you'll hear me play a lot of Shay and I'll I'll sprinkle Tyler in there as well. Um other R and B cats from out here. I started sprinkling Mosa once. They they gotta get you. They got they need more time to get used to his voice though. Facts. That's what they, they get. They need more time. But yeah, um, anytime I play shit, uh, your music around shorties, they definitely loving it. So keep doing what you're doing. You're definitely doing something that works. Um, I think the fellas are gonna gravitate to you easily. 
because you be making I feel shit. Feel like it's the opposite. What? Like you feel like more dudes listen tell, to you? No, 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 no I'm saying people usually tell me like they heard of my shit because a girl put them on or wouldn't whatnot. Oh, that makes At sense. At least back when, like like a year or two. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. Dude, That's how it should be. No bullshit. Cause hey, you know the formula. If the shorty's listening to it, the fella's gonna listen to it too. So it works. It works. That's how you get all the men. Ain't that right, cat? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> all right. So bet. So if you want, uh, just last piece. Uh, our reality check segment. Uh, if you had just a piece of advice that you wanted to give to anybody listening, uh, what would it be? You said piece of advice. Yeah. For this, we call it our reality checks. Mm. You can go to one of his. I say, um, say, I want to actually say something for real. Yeah, facts. Because I feel like a, you have a lot of people that like listen to your music, but they don't really have that any uh, that much opportunity to learn about you or just hear. I say, hear talks, you feel me? Trust your gut, and follow your intuition, and be yourself. I, number one thing is be yourself, though, for real. Don't 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 get caught in the uh, smoke and mirrors and whatnot, like. I feel like especially nowadays in the social media era, it's like easy to lose your essence and like or get like caught in what he's doing, she's doing, whatever. Just be yourself, man, and you know, do whatever pleases you. All right. Be you. All right. Be free. Say it up. I, I'm curious though. I asked you this, mm. but what's y'all favorite album that y'all got out of all these? On here? Oh, just on the table. On the oh, table. I answered. I, I told him it'd have to be a toss up between Outcast and J Rock. And I think J Rock's album is still slept on to this day. It definitely is. Man. Shit. Um, I already know what he's picking. Nah, what you think I'm picking? Pick to Pimple Butterfly? He think I picked to Pimple Butterfly. Um, nah, because I'm See, a Kendrick a stan. Nah, honestly, for me, it's a toss up between. It's, it's a three way tie, actually. Roddy, uh, Black, what you said, Atlanta Love Letter and the First Culture. Can they see it on the camera? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, East yeah. Atlanta Love Letter, The First Culture by Migos, and Please Excuse Me for Being Antisocial uh, by Roddy Rich. Those will probably be my top three that are on this table right now. Uh, please Excuse Me for an Being Antisocial, still a vibe. I think War Baby was slept on, but that shit still go crazy from top to bottom. East Atlanta Love Letter, every shorty that was... <clears throat> associated with me was annoyed by me when this album came out because no one could tell me shit <laughs> no one could tell me shit when this album came out and the first culture what no you don't got to say anything shit I nigga i'll be thinking about how stiz was able to pull offset the same year they dropped that album that's crazy and what we gotta have that? a 2017 the 2017 culture dropped and cousin stiz was able to pull offset for headlock which still go crazy to this day. And we got to have a talk about Stiz on another episode. But, um, yeah, those are my three. Niggas go crazy. Uh, but I do want to say to everybody that's listening, if you haven't had the chance, go check out Tyler Loyal's music. He has two tapes and a bunch of singles out right now. Uh, there's definitely a lot of underrated work on previous tapes as well. There's, there's some shit that I didn't even play that I wanted to, but for time, I didn't. There's some joints out there, so make sure y'all go check them out. You feel me? Um, catch them on his socials. How can they find you? Tyler Loyal, everything. Facts. Tyler Loyal. Facts. So, yeah, make sure y'all go check him out. Uh, Rich, anything before? Nah, Dev said it all. You already know. We have him on the show. Uh, you heard what you heard. Go check out Nova. Go check Thanks out all out. his early earlier music as well. Facts. Follow him on his socials. Follow us on our socials as well. Don't forget that. And uh, just stay tuned for what Tyler got coming in the in 2022 because, like he said, he got nothing but hits. So I'm going to be expecting yes, nothing sir. but hits. Facts. Big shit all 2022, man. <laughs> all right, facts. There's something that came out. Oh, Tori told Tori told Megan the to dance, bitch. That was crazy. I saw that. I was like, that was hey, crazy. no way that he was said so that crazy. shit, bro. <laughs> that hey, was no crazy. way he said that shit. I felt so fucked up for laughing. There's no way in hell he actually said that shit. I felt terrible. I can't believe it. And I can't. I just can't believe that. I need to. Hear I the can audio. believe that. I can't. I need to hear. The <laughs> There's no way a nigga is that ignorant. Bro. I can believe him doing that shit. Okay, I need, we're I need to hear a voice recording to like confirm that. Because he said, she said. There's been too much of that in this case. I need proof that he actually said that. Cause I, if he said that, just knowing his lock personality, the nigga up. <laughs> if he said that, lock the nigga lock up. Him. <laughs> I, yeah, there's no defending. Are we recording? Are we recording?
No? Oh, we're recording? Oh, okay, I didn't know we were recording. Bad, damn. Um, all right, so we'll just come in. <clears throat> yeah, lock that nigga up if you did that shit. Facts. <laughs> or said that. Yeah, did that shit, said that shit. And yeah, that man knew what he was doing. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I just need audio recording to confirm that. Because when I read that, when I heard that shit, I started crying and I felt bad. I was like, no way in hell Tori is that stupid. Honestly, yeah, at this point, because it's been a year and some change uh, since the incident, we already know he did that shit. And with this one f- statement to come out, I'm going to assume it's true if it came out in court. If that one little fact is true, the man is guilty. Because what, uh, what other reason would he be saying dance bitch? He shot at the ground, obviously, as to show a warning or some shit like that. And one of the bullets either missed the ground and hit her foot or one of the bullets ricocheted off the ground and hit her foot. Either way, his intent was clear if he did say dance, bitch. So, yeah, you got to yeah, you got to throw away the key. I'm sorry. And like the crazy thing is, bro, I'll be I'll keep it a rack with the listeners. I'll keep it a rack with the listeners since the man's cancellation. I stopped listening to a good majority of his shit, but time and time again, I'll go back and see what I missed. And there's been some shit he came out with in the last year. He been that sound like some quality R and B to me. I'm not. I haven't been a fan of the hip hop releases, but there's been some R and B releases that he did. Like there's, there's some joints on that tape he dropped last year called Playboy, or I think that came out this year, and they go. You know, it sucks that this whole thing had to happen because I was a Tory Lanez fan. And, I, you know, parts of me still want to, you know, be a Tory Lanez fan. But as details come out, I'm just like, he makes it hard for a brother. He does make it hard for a brother. You feel me? I feel like just now Chris Brown is starting to receive his flowers again. And even though, like, Chris Brown, people, he's he had a solid fan base uh, for a good majority ever since the whole shit happened back in 20, 2007. But... Ever since he appeared at Rolling Loud, California, if you watched his set at all last weekend and you just saw how the fans were um, praising him and just singing along with him, it made me proud as a fan because I know the type of shit that that man had to go through. So to see where he's at now this far in his career, you know, makes me happy for the kid. And, you know, if Tori gets through all this shit, I don't want to believe half of this shit, but these things are coming out i'm going to assume they're facts so i hope with time i hope with time tory can get over this shit too because i do think he's a talented individual it sucks that's my take uh well considering how he can go to jail if he's found guilty he better hope this shit ain't true because we ain't gonna be hearing tory music for a little while if all this shit is true see my thing but he is- just dropped it out on friday so he, he he's he i think he's preparing himself what'd you think it was okay. It wasn't anything crazy. I mean, I didn't even know he released. Like, my roommate had to tell me about it. I had to go look for it. Because he's blackballed. I get it. I get it. I mean, it is what it is. But um, he still has his following. But I got, like, a throwback vibe with um, the album he dropped. I felt like he was trying to recreate, like, early 2000s music or, no, it's or a, R&D. It's an 80s album. All right. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he, so, he dubs it as an 80s album. Oh, then there we go. Yeah, that was the whole goal. And that was the theme of the album. Yeah, so I, that's the vibe I got. So I mean, it it was okay. I mean, if it depends on how what what kind of mood you're in if, for listening to that. I was just vibing and chilling. I wasn't trying to get lit. I wasn't you know trying to feel some type of way. I just put it on while I was smoking and just listening. And, and he was saying some shit. He definitely uh, has been. This the album had a lot of a lot of moments where where. It just made me reflect, like, damn, this nigga's been through it with women, and then it made me realize, like, what he's done. So I'm just like, I don't understand the point of this album, but I see the near or there. But it was, it was okay. Mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, we hope y'all uh, enjoyed the Tyler Loyal interview. Um, he's been rocking with us for a little bit. When we connected with him last year, he definitely said that he wanted to make it out here. So I'm happy that we were able to do that. You feel me? Um, I understand parts of what he was saying when he talks about, you know, the mass effect, the Massachusetts effect. I say it to everyone. Um, It's kind of hard to gain exposure when you're out here because of the politics and all that shit. But, hey, really check out that man. Check out that kid's music because I definitely do believe that he has a future for this and that man is here to stay. You feel me? So definitely 
look out uh, for anything that he got dropping out. And yeah, we'll just keep it like that. We wouldn't promote his music unless it was good. Facts. And let me just speak on that. Let me speak on that because I'm so happy Rich said that because it's been a topic that I've been trying to avoid on this podcast because there's like certain shit I feel like I shouldn't have to say, but there's so many people out there that don't even watch full episodes or any type of clip from this episode but just feel entitled to certain shit so this is to y'all right this is to y'all because i get a lot of people that hop in our inbox that send us messages and they want to become involved in the show but they know nothing about the show they know nothing about what we do they just see somebody else has been featured or they see a clip that maybe locally went viral or maybe they saw a quick clip on Instagram that they th- thought appealed to them. So now they want to become involved. And let me just tell you all this right now. My co-host as well. But if I do not find anything appealing about what you might have to offer, it's a no for me, dog. It's a no for me. But I'll just be honest with you. If it doesn't fall in my radar, my radar, I can't speak for my other co-hosts, but if it doesn't fall in my radar, I am not going to be the one to go out of my way to try to make things happen. That's just me. If something falls in my lap and I like it, that's different. So when people send us stuff, I check it out. And if I like it, I reach out. With that being said, I may like what you have to offer. I might like what you do, but there's also an art to this. So I might like what you do, but I don't think that there's anything, any type of conversation that I can generate from it. Like I might like your music. You might make dope shit. I might not think I have any reason to have a conversation with you. And that's me personally. That's me personally. I've had a bunch of artists who, like, wanted to come on the show. And I've just been like, yo, honestly, like, I have nothing against your shit. I just don't think I have anything to talk to you about. And I don't mean it in a shady way. or That's just how I feel. I would much rather, you know, have somebody here that I could actually engage with for the entire portion of the episode rather than sitting next to somebody and me being bored within maybe the first five to ten minutes. You feel me? I think me? you're over-explaining yourself, to be honest with you. This is, I'm going I'm to break it down for the fans. I'm, just, the viewers. I'm just being I honest. I mean, they get it. They get it. We've had this conversation before. It's it's very simple. The thing you is, we've had us, this conversation, yeah. but like Let people, people get, don't... Pe- no, it's like we've had this conversation on the show, but it's like there's just so many idle listeners. There's not like consistent listeners, so there's people that haven't heard us say this shit. So I feel like time and time again, we got to just come back and just let new listeners know because not everyone's going back to find out that old shit. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I hear that, but for for me, this is the way I see it. You can send us things. It's just like you DMing a girl. You can send, or a, a guy, you can shoot your shot, but it's in that other person's hands on whether they reciprocate that energy or not. So you can send us anything, but it, we we are not we don't have to respond to you. You don't we don't owe you anything. So don't don't come to us thinking we owe you anything. We owe you a spot on the show. We owe you a response. We owe you anything. If we fuck with you, we're gonna try to find a way to make it work and get you on the show. If we don't, it's simple as that. I don't feel like we need to we need to go in 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 depth much more than that. My bad. It's very it's very it's very simple. Like yo, you want to fuck with us? Shoot us your shit. If we fuck with it, we gonna respond. If we don't, don't take it to heart. Hit us up in a couple months when you've worked on your craft and, and things might be different. It's very simple. Don't take it to heart. You are creative. We're creatives. You know how this shit works. So, word. Thank you, Rich. And I'll edit out most of what I said. So, so I mean, they don't need to hear that no, long you explanation. Edit it out. Maybe, it just, maybe it just, it's different hearing it from a different version. I appreciate that. Facts, facts. And if your shit is trash, I'm not doing it. I'm just saying that. But um, with that being said, right? With that being said, um, we do appreciate everyone, you know, who sends us shit. And yeah, if you think you're dope, we'll put you on. Simple as that. Uh, other things that happened within the week that I just want to touch on before we leave, right? Quick. And I'll make this quick because Rich didn't watch this. So Kanye and Drake had a little joint concert together this past weekend. 
let me tell you a couple of things about that concert, right? So it was supposed to be a benefit concert for Larry Hoover, and it was put together by Jay Prince. Larry Hoover wasn't mentioned once at all during the event. He wore Larry Hoover clothes. He, he wore it. That, that. <laughs> <laughs> she your man's, bro. Yes, yes. That is my, that's my dog. That's my dog. Larry Hoover wasn't mentioned once at all during this entire performance. <laughs> and this is a benefit concert to free Larry Hoover. So I just want to make that the first thing known about this show. <laughs> Second, it was supposed to start at... It was supposed to start at 8 Pacific time. I, f I don't know what that is in um, Eastern. I think 11. it's 10. 11? It's three hours behind. 11. Okay. So it was supposed to start at 11 Eastern Standard Time, right? And then maybe 15 to 20 minutes in when everyone was waiting... They thought they was slick, and they just made a slight change to the sign, and they said, midnight now. So anyone that was waiting now had to wait an extra hour for them to come out. We're used to Kanye being late, so cool. Now 12 o'clock comes on, still not on. Maybe 12.30. I don't know. I turned that shit off by then. <laughs> um, I didn't come back until Twitter started telling me to come back. So when I did come back, um, he got his Sunday service choir and they're performing a little too long for my liking. I'm just thinking they're here to stall these people. But Drake and Kanye finally come out as, at one point. Uh, they come out together, which I think is an incredibly dope moment. They start off everything beautifully. Kanye runs through a set list of his hits. His hits. <laughs> like when I tell you he was doing all of his hits, I was shocked. And I was excited for Drake to come out. And when Drake did come out, I'm like, bet. We're about to get rocking. <sighs> And then my dog disappointed. He performed, I think, eight songs, eight or nine songs, and they were mostly CLB songs. So that check. I got Kanye going through his entire catalog of hits, and then I got Drake coming on performing shit like Way Too Sexy, Knife Talk, um, Girls Want Girls. No friends in the industry, which I think is hilarious because he was throwing shots at Kanye all through that song. So to be to hear that song live in this event with Kanye right next door, I thought that was pretty funny. And it made me believe that rumor we talked about last week even more. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I was just extremely disappointed. I thought that, you know, when I saw that shit, I don't know if Drake was trying to be petty. I don't know if he was just there to collect the quick check and be on his way. 100%. But I really think they fucked up a dope moment that could have been. And I think Kanye was trying to make the moment happen on his behalf. He did what he needed to do. And I don't think Drake followed up. And maybe he did that shit on purpose. I don't know. But they really fucked up maybe an iconic moment. I thought Chris Brown and Drake linking back up was, a, was an iconic moment in the music. But that night... They really fucked up a big potential moment. And like I said, they didn't mention Larry Hoover once. They're trying to sell hoodies for $200. I don't care if it's Balenciaga. I'm not buying $200. I'm not paying $200 for a plain hoodie that said free Hoover in the back. I'm, I'm just not. So I don't know what was going on, what their intentions were, but I don't think they, um, I don't think they accomplished whatever their goal was to me. And that's that's all I wanted to mention about that event. Their goal was to make money. Do you think they made money? Y yes. Then, then it's Kanye and Drake. Then they completed their goal. We don't even know what. We don't even know. There's a it's reason. Like the BLM, there's a reason. It's like the, the there's a reason we shit. don't know numbers, bro. It's like the BLM shit, bro. We raise these funds and then nobody knows what happens to the funds. I'll say this, and I, this is all I'm gonna say about it. Kanye and Drake making making up seemed forced forced anyway because I'm pretty sure it was all Kanye like saying i'm gonna reach out to drake i'm gonna try to get drake to do this and he was putting it all in the public eye so drake didn't like accept his um olive branch as a or whatever they fucking call it peace treaty whatever he would have looked bad you know what i mean so i feel like drake had no choice but to do this and as a result didn't put his best effort forward he probably still don't fuck with kanye i understand i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give my best to kanye fans when i don't even fuck with kanye so I respect it. I understand it. See, I would respect your take, except everyone there wasn't just Kanye fans. They were like, they were. If Drake came out as a surprise, I get it. But people paid for Kanye and Drake, so it's just, it was just a failed moment in my eyes. That's all. Yeah, I hear it. That's all. That's all. They made their money though. Facts. Um, 
but yeah, I think that's the only thing I wanted to touch on this week and nothing else in particular. We can come back uh, next week. if Go get vaccinated. Up. COVID is going crazy out the ass. Facts. But that's it. Facts. Yeah. These booster shots. I hate that, like, I wish it was just do this shit once and it's over with. There's always something else I got to do. Like, there's these two doses I had to take. Now I got to take a booster shot, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to take more shit in the future. It's just all these government regulations of them trying to control us. You can't do certain shit without a vaccination. You can't work certain places without a vaccination. The only reason I got vaccinated. <sighs> the government trying to control everything that we do, and niggas are telling me that I'm microchipped and all this shit, and shit's weird out here. Shit's weird out here, but... um. You know, I guess we got to do whatever we got to do as a society to move forward. All right. That's whatever. Um, from that, do I'm, I don't, was there any new music that came out? Tori, I don't really. Rick Ross dropped his album. Rick Ross did drop his album. Did you listen to it? Damn fucking right I listened to it. Did you like it? It's the only thing I've been listening to. So you did fuck with it? I love that album. Okay. It's a, it's a great freaking album. My vibe of the week comes off this album. Tell me the good songs off this album. All of them. Oh, really? All of them. It's a solid album from start to finish. Okay. Um, what was his last album that dropped? Uh, Port of Miami 2? Yeah. Way better. Better than Port of Miami 2? Yeah, too? way better than Port of Miami 2. Like, not even a uh, comparison. What would you say is um, that so, song on this? For me, Rapper Estates. Oh, yeah, Benny. I, I heard that song. Benny. Benny. Yeah. Benny did that, bro. But Outlaws, just the way the way Outlaws just, when he put it, combines it with the album, the way it flows and just fits perfectly with his luxurious rap and all that like it i just kept repeat repeat, replaying outlaws even though i already heard it and that's the main single from this so those are the two tracks for me that really had just resonated but um yeah this this is his his best project in a while that's a big claim maybe i need to listen to this album again yeah, man. I'll, I'll, I'll I mean, he hasn't. He's only dropped two albums since 2017. So, no, I feel you. I feel you. I probably gotta run this album back again a couple more times. But before then I again, give a definitive. Yeah, then again, I've listened to it at least six times through. So, word. Yeah. Juice World dropped an album, uh, second posthumous album, Fighting Demons, much more darker than uh, the previous tape. Legends never died. Much darker uh, tones, uh, but True. great music. Great music at the same time. Uh, it's I, just yeah. Go ahead. I got that depressed ass feel from that, and I had to turn it off. This is dark as hell. It was so slow, and like just I was like, nah. I was trying to listen to it at the gym, bro. It it made me not want to work out. I, I tr- cut that shit off so quick. Mm-hmm. I haven't gone back to it just because of how like the vibe I was getting from that. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I got a theory. I got a theory about Juice World. Um, you know, Juice World created a lot of music, and. As they release his music, I feel like they're releasing his earliest shit first and then going um, down the list to the most recent that he dropped that he recorded before his passing. And with this tape fighting demons for it to be his second posthumous album, I was listening and I was like, there's a lot of dark um, tones in this shit. But as they as his camp drops more and more music, I feel like I'm being given. um literally a biography of his downfall so as the music gets darker as the content becomes heavier i'm thinking that whatever shit he dropped latest before he died they they take more time to work on it so when they do end up coming out um i'm like okay this is probably he probably recorded this maybe a little before he died so that let me know whatever state of mind he was at around that time and this shit yo like some when i when i first heard the news that he passed it was unbelievable like i don't even like shed tears but i shed a tear for the kid it was unbelievable but then you go back to his music you listen to his content and he it's all there it's it's literally all he lays it all out for you he doesn't hide any of the shit he's going through he puts it all right there so when you hear how he unfortunately passed he was telling us all the time. I don't know who he had to help him during those phases, but he is incredible with how he chooses to express his thoughts. That's all. Dark album, but there's a lot of good music on this tape. My favorite song on this album might be either You Wouldn't Understand, went crazy on that song, and um, another song that I would have to say would either be Doom 
or until the plug comes back around. Yeah, those are probably my favorites from this tape. Uh, and he records so much music, so I do thoroughly believe that he has much more music to come out with. All right, now let's get into our reality checks. Rich can go first, of course. Always remember to work hard. Now, I know we go through times in life where we're feeling down or we feel like the world is just against us. And we feel like even though the hard, even the hard work we are putting in isn't leading to anything. But don't forget, every day is a baby step. Don't don't not work hard because you didn't reap results of your effort that day, because the results may be three months down the line, six months down the line, nine months down the line. So just make sure you're always working hard in what, whatever you're doing, because you will reap the re you will reap what you sow. You're never going to get anywhere just sitting idle, not doing anything, taking handouts, expecting people to do things for you. That's how you become lazy. That's how you become stagnant. And that's how life sucks, really. So work hard, go out and get it, be productive and be your own person and just always know that, yeah, today might not have been the best day, but I put in that work in so tomorrow can be an even better day. Facts. So that's my that's my uh, reality check for y'all. That was a dope reality check, brother. Uh, for my reality check, I'll just leave with the people to, um, wow, I'm sorry. I will leave this with the people. Uh, whatever you may... Um, Whatever you may believe is right for you, I think you should just run 100% full speed at it. Uh, I've encountered some like difficult moments throughout the past couple of weeks just um, comparing my reality to what it could have like been. And I hate comparison. Com comparison can be a bitch. But I've been going through a couple things within the last couple of weeks, and I am now starting to understand what the next couple of months to the next year is starting to look like for me. And I'm starting to notice what I need to do to make sure I go in the route that I want to go. So a lot of that has to do, unfortunately, with me leaving certain shit that I'm passionate about behind. But I have to do that in order for me to get to the next step to where I want to go. So I think all of that shit is necessary. So I'm going to pass that on to y'all. Whatever you believe is right for you. And when I say for you, so not what other people tell you is right for you, not what your parents tell you is right for you, not what your partner tells you is right for you. What you believe is right for you, you should run at that shit 100% full speed before you miss uh, your exit. Because when you do miss your exit, shit, if you're like me, when I miss my exit, it takes maybe a good 10, 15 minutes to get back to where I need to go. So, hey. If you go exactly where you need to go, you won't miss your exit. And I think you'll do just fine. So that's my reality check for y'all. You feel me? And that is pretty much the end of the episode. I want to say thank you to everyone that stayed tuned uh, to this entire episode. Shout out to Tyler for pulling up. We appreciate you. Shout out to Kat for holding us down in the studio. I hope you're feeling nice in there. Uh, shout out to Amani. I hope she's resting up and feeling nice as well. Um, next week should be fun. We got the end of the year podcast coming up pretty soon. We don't know if it's next week or in two weeks, but when we do do it, y'all will be the first to find out. Uh, so yeah, it'll be lit. Make sure you follow us on our socials at the urban product, uh, subscribe to us, leave reviews, cop merch is getting cold out. We're doing a restock soon. So get your supplies while they last. You feel me rich? Anything you got to say? Nah, he said it all. Make bet. sure you listen to the man. Bet, bet, so, bet. All right, so you've been listening to The Urban Product. It's been your boy DME. It's been your boy Cozy Rich. <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Love. <clears throat> Funny shit, my depression. I just got back in my Birkin. Had to count all of my blessings. For the minute was hurting. Someone told me that my dog, yeah, yeah, yeah. They more like a serpent. Snakey ass niggas, they lurking, yeah, yeah. And it's with certain. Gotta watch the people that can get. Cause they got no backbone Shawty just stay patient in my bed Till a nigga back on My shawty only one who kept this shit A hundred through the years My fears was losing all my peers And so I gotta make it out Through the struggle Took a different route In this life all I got Is my word and my pride Till I die Sacrifice